Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to do an updated video on mixing and matching uh, different AR uppers and lowers. Okay, so I, I, did a, I did a video on this about four years ago. A very popular video. It's got like 20k plus views. I've been asked a few questions in the comments. And I said, hey, let me do an updated video that will cover some of those questions. Okay, so uh, when it comes to AR-15, and we're going to talk about AR-10s and AR-9s as well. But let's start with AR-15s. Uh, the gun separates really easily into an upper and a lower, okay? So the lower is the part with the serial number. Uh, the You know, this is the part. The, the lower is the part that has to go through an FFL and you get your background check. The upper is not considered a gun, okay? Uh, this is something that you can just order online and it ships to your house. So it's very popular for people to, uh, you know, to, to order, to get a lower, right, through the FFL, and then order multiple uppers, you know, have them shipped to their house to go on the lower. Okay, so uh, reasons why people would want to have uh, different uppers. Number one, they may want to have different optics, right? So every time they want to shoot a different optic, they don't want to have to, you don't want to have to re-zero it, okay? So different optics, different length barrels is another popular reason. Uh, and also different calibers, right? We're going to touch on all these things. So these are reasons why people would want to have, you know, different uppers, you know, why they would want to mix and match different uppers and lowers. Another reason on the lower is maybe they got different triggers, okay? So, for example, you may have a, um, a match grade trigger that, you know, like, because match grade triggers can be very expensive. So you may want to have a lower with a match grade trigger or a binary trigger or some other type of a fancy trigger. And uh, you may want to, like, you know, move that around to, you know, mix and match that with different uppers. So, so that would also be a reason why you would be mixing and matching because there are different uh, triggers, right? Um, so um, uh, let's first talk about how AR-15s work and how that affects the mixing and matching. So when you chamber round, press trigger, gun goes bang, bullet comes out the barrel. Once it reaches the gas block over here, the gas comes up through a gas port comes back through a tube and basically pushes on the bolt over here. Bolt comes back, case ejects. Okay, so so there's a buffer weight back here that that um, kind of times how fast that bolt starts moving back. Okay, so that's the buffer weight. So 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 the gun unlocks, buffer weight comes back. There's a there's a buffer spring back here that then pushes the bolt forward. And what that does is it strips the next round uh, off of the case, uh, chambers it, and uh, then basically closes the bolt, make sure the bolt's fully closed. Okay, so there's a certain amount of pressure that has to be in the system for all that to work correctly. Right? You need a certain amount of gas pressure pushing your bolt back. You need a certain buffer weight uh, to have the right timing, all right? And then you need a, a buffer spring to push the bolt back home, right, and close it after after it picks up the next round. Okay. So those those things all need to be in balance. And if uh, well, let's just talk about a uh, different length barrels, okay? If you put in a different length barrel, the gas in the system can change. Okay. Now usually with if you're getting a usually the the length of the of the gas tube. Uh, when you buy a complete upper is matched to the barrel okay so in most cases you're just going to be able to just throw it in and it's going to work uh, sometimes you may have to tweak it okay you may have to tweak it uh with a, a slightly different uh buffer weight right you might have to get a slightly heavier one or slightly uh, lighter one or you might have to get a slightly stiffer or slightly lighter uh buffer spring okay so uh, let's talk about different barrel lengths, okay? Because you can have barrel lengths. They go from like 4 inches, 7.5, 10.5, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. Um, usually in the 7.5 to 18, okay, uh, you can usually just kind of hot swap it and uh, it will work, right? With, with, with whatever buffer weight and buffer spring came on the gun, uh, it will work. Now, it might be slightly overgassed or might be slightly uh, undergassed, and you can just adjust that by getting a slightly heavier or slightly 
lighter buffer weight. Okay, so that's usually a fairly, so that's usually a case of you don't have to make any adjustment or you just have to make a minor adjustment. Okay, um, so that's, that's this sweet spot between 7.5 and 18. Now, once you start going to the extremes, right, towards like, you know, 20 inches plus or below 7 inches, um, you might have to make more drastic changes to keep the gas system in balance, okay? Uh, so a lot of times, with uh, especially if you're going 20 inches plus on the barrel length, uh, you might have to get a longer buffer tube, okay? Uh, a, a rifle length buffer tube which will allow for a longer heavier buffer weight in there uh, so once at so at some point adjusting the buffer weight and the buffer spring may not be enough you may also have to adjust the length of your buffer tube okay um, and sometimes you might even have to go a step beyond that and get an adjustable gas block okay so that's usually uh, 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 the fix that's gonna fix the problem for sure okay because um you know with with getting the right buffer weight you know buffer spring uh um tube length a lot of times that's a bit that sometimes there's a lot of trial and error with that but if you have an adjustable uh gas block especially if it's a very adjustable gas block uh it's almost certain that you're going to quickly figure out what gas you want coming into the system so with ar-15s um, most people will tell you when you're shooting, you want the ejection pattern to be at three o'clock. I prefer at two o'clock, slightly over gassed, right? So instead of ejecting here, I want it ejecting up here. Um, this way the gun will work when it's dirty, okay? Uh, if it's ejecting like up here at one o'clock, 12 o'clock, uh, it's usually way over gassed and you're gonna have to put in a little bit more, a heavier buffer weight, uh, maybe a heavier buffer spring. If it's ejecting a lot, some people like it ejecting at four o'clock because it's a little smoother shooting, a little smoother recoiling. Okay, but if you're ejecting like at five o'clock, um, or if you're, or if it's simply not locking back on the last round, right? Uh, that's usually because it, there's a defect, there's a deflector here usually, so it's usually not going to get uh, back to five o'clock. Uh, four o'clock is usually as far back as it goes, but you'll notice that you're not locking open on the last round uh, That's usually the first indication. Yeah, that means that you are under gassed So if you if you you know, that usually means a lighter buffer weight Okay, or if you have an adjustable gas block, you can you know, basically let a little bit more gas into the system Okay, so those are the typical adjustments that you're gonna have to, that you may have to make. Okay, in some cases you may not need to make them at all. Uh, but depending on how, what your ejection pattern is, if you need a, a a little bit more gas in your system, you might go with. Uh, uh, or if you're not, or if you notice that the, that um, it's uh, you're not locking back on the on the last round, uh, you might need to go with a lighter buffer weight. Or if you notice that. Uh, um, you know, the rims are getting ripped or something along those lines. You got too much gas in the system. Uh, you might put in a heavier buffer weight. If that doesn't fix the problem, you may need to get an, adjust an adjustable gas block. Okay. So those are some of the changes that you're going to need uh, that you might need to make uh, as you mix and match different uppers and lowers. Okay. So, yes, the, the, the uppers and lowers, if they're mil spec, they will mate together. Uh, but then there's a question of, okay, is the gas in the system in balance? Okay. And that's how you're going to adjust it. Usually buffer weight, buffer spring, and find, you know, maybe uh, different length gas tube, uh, a buffer tube, or uh, worst case scenario, you know, you might have to get an adjustable gas block. Okay. Now, next reason why sometimes people want different uppers uh, is they want different calibers. Okay. So as far as different calibers, the easiest thing to do and the most common uh, is to get a 22 convertible. I mean, I, I shoot this all the time. Um, so it's just, you get a kit, all, all it is is a bolt and, and magazines, usually it's a three pack, uh, and you can shoot 22 rifle out of your AR-15. Um, there's, there's no gas that's coming. I mean, even though there's a gas hole here and a gas tube, um, there's, not enough, there's not enough gas created by the 22 long rifle to cycle it. So it basically turns your gas AR-15 uh, into a uh, into a blowback. This functions just like a blowback. Okay, 
Um, so that's 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 the most common caliber conversion that people will make. Now, the next most common for an AR-15 is probably a 300 blackout, um, which basically they take a uh, um, in design they take a a, um, uh, a 556 case and they basically shove a 308 bullet into it. Okay, um, and so they're sending they're shooting a, a 308 bullet, a, a 308 cal, a 308 diameter bullet. Uh, out of your AR-15, okay? So it, it's uh, technically it's a so I wrote down here, 762 by 35, okay? So we're gonna come back to this because a lot of time, uh, in fact, in the comments, people were asking me about you know converting their AR to a 762 gun, and then the confusion that becomes well, 762. Are you talking like 762 by 51? Are you talking 762 by 39? Or you're talking 762 by 35. Okay, so there there can be there's there's different there's different 762 uh, calibers out there. So when it comes to 762, we gotta know what what we're talking about. Uh, so um, the the most common conversion that people will do is they'll get a 300 upper, um, and I think that it shoots the same. You, you can use the same bolt carrier. And you use the same magazines. Okay, now I don't have one, which is why it's like I'm not 100% familiar with it. But that's the information uh, I've been able to collect on that. Uh, so that's a fairly easy conversion. The one thing you gotta be like super sure, right? You gotta be really careful because it uses the same 5.56 magazines, and the calibers, the, the cartridges look the same. If you accidentally mix in a 300 uh, with your 5.56 and you accidentally shoot a 30 caliber bullet uh out of your 556 five, gun you're gonna blow it up okay so that's one of the reasons i don't i don't have uh and i don't use 300 blackout cartridges because for what i do the speed at which i work with the number of people the way you know basically that's an accident waiting to happen uh so i don't mess with 300 blackout for that reason okay so there's plenty of pictures on the internet of people blowing up 556 five, guns which by shooting 300 blackout out of it now um it, it shouldn't chamber right but what happens is if you the way it chambers because obviously it's i mean how do you get a 30 caliber bullet into your 556 five, but well, what happens is when you chamber it in some cases the bullet gets pushed back into the case okay when you chamber and that's how the bolt closes uh and you're able to get ignition okay so it's not always going to happen but it can happen um so that's just a warning with, with 300 blackout, which is a very popular caliber. Now, there's other calibers out there that people will uh, will, will try to shoot, will, will basically um, uh, convert their AR-15s to shoot. So the question becomes, you know, will, will, with this caliber or that caliber, are these compatible with an AR-15? Well, when you're ordering it, you have to make sure that it is compatible with your mil spec AR-15 lower. That's a question you got to ask. So one of the qu common questions is, can you get, can I get this uh, mil spec AR-15 lower to shoot 762 by 39? Okay, that's just your AK-47 round. Okay, uh, so there's conversion kits out there that allow you to do it. Now it's not just a question. I think you got, you know, it, it, I mean, there's an upper, there's a change that's got to be made to the bolt. I think the different bolt face. And I think there's also a magazine adapter. So, um, in the case of 762 by 39, right, the AK-47 rounds, the upper and the upper that you would order and your mil spec lower, I they may not be hot swappable. You may have to do some other modifications. Uh, you may have to do something to allow a magazine, uh, you know, to, to 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 allow the lower to accept. Uh, that cartridge because the the issue with the 762 by 39 uh, the cartridges are very tapered and that's why AK magazines like they have a you know a very big curve okay so so just to I'm just giving you guys an example there that um, there's a lot of time, if you look on the internet they'll give you like a huge list of calibers that are compatible with uh, with uh, your AR-15 but they may not be hot swappable you may have to do additional modifications. Okay, so that's something that you got to ask, you know, the, the, the seller basically. You know, you, you're buying it from or the manufacturer. Um, what, you know, is it hot swappable or can I just throw on 
the upper onto my lower or do I have to make um, modifications to my lower? Okay, so, so that's the question to ask with that. So, uh, and in that case, when we're talking about 762 by 39, the AK round, okay? Now, the 300 blackout that I was talking about a few minutes ago, that's 762 by 35, okay? So, we got two different 762 rounds there. One's by uh, 762 by 39, and the other one's 762 by 35, okay? Uh, now, incidentally, even though both bullets say 762 so that they're 30 caliber the russian one is still slightly different right so you can't just use a 308 bullet uh and and and, and load that um into a, into a, uh, an ak cartridge there is a slight difference between the russian 762 uh, and the nato 762 okay so just just be aware of that uh, if you're looking to do any reloading okay so Speaking of 762, let's now move into the AR-10, okay, AR-10. So with AR-10, there's no mil spec, there's no standard. Um, so just because you got one company that says they sell AR-10s and another company that sells sells AR-10s, does not mean that the AR-10, the AR uppers from one company are going to fit the AR-10 lowers from a different company, okay? Uh, they usually don't, okay? With AR-15s, which we were talking about earlier, you can expect that if you buy an AR-15 from one company, an upper from one company, an AR-15 lower from another company, with AR-15s, right, especially if we're talking about 5.56 caliber, you can expect that that the uppers and lowers will fit. There may be some exceptions out there. There might be some things that are slightly out of spec or at the opposite end of tolerances, but you can generally expect that AR-15s that shoot 5.56, especially, uppers and lowers from different companies will mate and they will work. With AR-10, expect the opposite, okay? Uh, uppers and lowers of AR-10s from different companies will generally not mate. They will generally not work. Um, now, if you do significant modification, you might get them to mate. You might get them to work, but now that's gunsmithing, right? You got to do, do a lot of extra work. In fact, even within the same company, they sometimes have different generations, okay? Uh, so it doesn't, so generation one may not, match up with generation two or generation three or etc so you so when you're ordering ar-10 uppers and lowers they got they should be from the same company okay uh and they should they should be of the same generation unless you are specifically told that you can mix and match different generations or if you're trying to mix and match from different companies you have to be told by company a that their product is going to you know, work in company B. Okay, so that's one of the things that you gotta you gotta know for sure. Now, um, as far as mixing and matching uh, AR-10 uppers and lowers, usually, like I got this one over here. This is from Palmetto. Um, so Palmetto tells you that this is Gen 3. They will tell you that their Gen 3 product is backward compatible with Gen 2 and Gen 1. Okay, so it's one of the things you gotta you gotta know. Okay. Um, so, uh, and also they will, like Palmetto makes, this is a 308 caliber. They tell you that the 6.5 six, Creedmoor upper uh, will fit on the 308 lower. Okay, so you have to be told, right, that, that their, their 308 uh, upper and their, and their 6.5 Creedmoor upper will work on the same uh, PA-10 Gen 3 lower, okay? Now, within the same company, right, within Palmetto, they also have their Saber line, okay? They got their Saber line um, AR-10, okay? So now this is a different AR-10 brand within the same company that is not compatible with this, okay? So sometimes within the same company, they have different lines that are not compatible. So you, you have to, like, do your homework. You got to ask questions, okay? I want this upper. Will it match that lower? Okay, um, you know, you know, send them a link from one, send them a link from the other one. Ask them specifically if these two will work, and if they don't work, can you return it? That's a really important question, right? Can you return it? Um, so with AR10s, okay. Uh, again, we've got issues of sometimes you want because I got a 20-inch barrel here. I at some point I want to get a 16-inch barrel uh, with AR10s. You absolutely want to have an adjustable gas block. 
Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this is the, the reason for this, right, is because 308 caliber, there's very wide variances. Okay, so I've tested out. There's usually like a 556. Five, um, I will test out like different brands. And I think the most I've ever seen on the same barrel, right, same barrel length, 16 inches, is maybe a variance. I think the max I've ever seen was maybe 100 and... Uh, 150 feet per second, maybe 200 max. Okay, that's the most I've ever seen as far as a variance, right? When I'm shooting 5.56 five, or 223, uh, different brand ammunitions out of a 16 inch AR 15. Okay, with 308, I have seen variances out of the same 20 inch barrel here. I have seen variances as, as much as 400 feet per second. Okay, so with 308, there's a very big difference. So you need to be able to adjust the amount of gas that's coming into the system. So the nice thing about Palmetto, um, this Gen 3 has 17 adjustable gas positions, okay? So so it, it's highly adjustable. So so with 308, it's, you know, two or three or four adjustable gas positions is probably not enough, okay? You, you need a lot. You need, like, 17 plus uh, because... 308 ammunition varies a lot. They, they, they sell it in very different gas pressures. Um, for a long time, 308 ammunition was was intended uh, and sold to hunters to be shot out of like bolt action rifles, where you know cycling, right? Or, or semi-automatic cycling was not an issue. Okay, um, so over time, the variances got further and further apart. Uh, hunters, a lot of times, they were asking for lighter recoiling ammunition. Um, you know, so 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 with 308, you're gonna see, you're gonna run into big variances like that. You absolutely have to have an adjustable gas block, otherwise you're gonna have problems. You're gonna have problems, or you're gonna be limited to like, okay, this is the ammunition that works for my gun. This is the only ammunition that that I can buy. Okay, so you're gonna run into limitations like that. With this Palmetto AR-10, <coughs> I can buy. Any 308, any 308 ammunition, and with 17 adjustable uh, uh, gas positions, I can get it to work. Okay? Now, in addition to that, I've also put in a slightly heavier buffer weight, and I've got a slightly stiffer uh, buffer spring. Okay, So I still have those other options available to me. Um, now, AR-15 to AR-10, absolutely not compatible. I mean, these are... I mean, the receiver itself is really big. You know, there's, there's, there's a really big difference here. The magazines are different. Okay, so AR-10, AR-15, very different guns. Um, that's a question that I was asked many times. Can I get a uh, can I get a 308 to shoot out of an AR-15? Absolutely not. Very different pressures. Uh, even if you could get it to fit on it, <laughs> I don't think that the AR-15 lower would last very long. Okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you can get, uh, 308, 762 are usually compatible on the same lower. Okay. Uh, there's, there's probably a couple other calibers in that power range that will also fit on that lower. Um, but 65 Creedmoor is probably the, the most popular alternative. Okay. Now be, be aware that when you get like a 65 Creedmoor, it has a really short barrel life. Okay, it's usually like 2,000 to maybe 5,000 or 2,000 to 8,000 rounds, depending on what type of accuracy you expect out of it, uh, compared to like 308, uh, which is, you know, closer to 20,000 20, plus rounds. Okay, so so if you go to 6.5 Creedmoor, you're getting a much shorter barrel length, okay? Uh, so, yeah, no, but much shorter barrel life, life, much shorter barrel length. Uh, if you go to 6.5 Cremo, which is the reason why I stuck with 308, okay, because I just I want to have be able to shoot 20,000 plus rounds. Okay, now um, the other popular one, AR9. Okay, uh, AR9s. They now usually, usually, but not always. These are blowback guns. Uh, again, th these are proprietary guns. Okay, so again, you don't expect that you're going to be able to buy an upper from one company and get it to fit on a lower from a different company. Sometimes there might be exceptions. You, you got to check, verify, be told, you know, specifically be told that it will work and that you can return it if it will not work. 
uh, but usually no, you gotta buy your uppers and lowers from the same company. Uh, you can definitely get them in different barrel lengths, right? So if you got like, you know, you get a lower, yeah, it makes, if you get an AR9 lower, it makes sense to get uppers of different barrel lengths and have fun with it. Um, one of the things that you gotta consider is what type of magazine do you want it to take? I like ones that take Glock magazines, right? Um, they, there are other options out there. The Glock magazines usually do not have a last round uh, bolt hold open. Uh, so that's, so, so I, you know, I, I like using the Glock ones because I got lots of Glock magazines. Uh, they work well, they're very reliable, don't have a last round bolt hold open. Uh, other companies have a different magazine design where you do have that last round bolt hold open usually more expensive sometimes there's reliability issues that's something that's company specific you got to look into it um but uh yeah generally not compatible especially if, uh, if if you're seeing that you know you got a lower from one company that has a last round bolt open yeah and yours is the opposite definitely don't try and mix and match those okay those those are definitely not going to work uh because this is a blowback Okay, you don't have gas coming into the system. Okay, so this is a straight blowback. It's like a 22. There's no rotating bolt. Uh, there's no there's no gas tube. So it works just like a pistol. The the recoil is the only thing that pushes the bolt back. Okay? The issue that I have had with with um, uh, with nine millimeter ARs is because it's a direct blowback. Um, there's no rotation to slow down the action. So the palmettos they usually sold with a four ounce buffer weight um and i find that that usually beats the gun up too much it's just too much you know the reco the, the the action's a little bit too fast a little too hard so uh even though they're sold with a four ounce buffer weight i put in an eight ounce uh and then that kind of cushions it slows it down a little bit uh so that's the usually the only thing that you need to concern yourself with um but because there's no gas coming into the system no matter what you what upper you throw on this whether it's a four inch or whether it's a you know a, a 16 inch or if they make it longer whatever it is there's there's no there's no gas in the system so that's not going to be an issue the only issue is uh is the action coming back too hard now as you go from a longer barrel to a shorter barrel okay um how much you know that that recoil how much pressure is pushing back on the gun it might change a little bit okay so I just put an eight ounce buffer weight on everything and I find it works fine. Gun doesn't beat itself up. Um, before I did that, when I used to have with the original uh, four ounce buffer weight, sometimes I would break that the hammer pins. The hammer pins would break on me. Okay, So by going to the heavier eight ounce buffer weight, I no longer have that problem. Okay? So uh, I covered a lot of stuff in this video that I think I didn't cover in the first video. And it was kind of meant to kind of fill that gap in. Oh, so it's basically a part two video. Uh, so if you guys got any questions, please let me know. And we'll talk again soon.